following is a hypnosis themed audio drama the themes in this file do not reflect the beliefs of the creator or the performers this is a fictional setting with potentially disturbing themes viewer discretion is advised beyond the edge of consciousness lies a universe of potential where the receptive descend and the willful command Permit yourself to witness the infinite parallels of these prismatic crossroads. But you may find yourself balancing precariously on the tip of the triangle. The Flock. As much as some would struggle to refute, we are often quite aimless creatures. Despite society raising us to contribute towards the whole, it is easy to fall into the solitary, to be aimless, devoid of focus or purpose. Many of us find that focus, but others simply wish to be led. This is the story of Vixine Dixon, a lovely fox with fair red fur, a red tail and matching red curls. Vixine was a human resources paper pusher in a job devoid of passion. She managed others and configured their daily work schedules. It was simple, but monotonous. Mr. Telling, you've been late three times this week. I don't have to tell you that's not good for your track record. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Miss Dixon. I was, uh, distracted. Uh, something came up recently, and, uh, it's been on my mind. <laughs> Mr. Telling, my schedule was recently changed to an hour later. I work on the 12th floor while you were on the 10th. Would it have anything to do with the fact that if you were an hour late for work, you'd happen to pass me in the elevator? I don't know how to answer that. Try, I'll start coming in on time. Mm, yeah, yes, ma'am. She would adjust herself in her seat, examine attendance records, reorganize schedules to increase efficiency. She worked to live, nothing more. I swear, if I wasn't here, this place would be a mess. They're like sheep. She pined for something, though I was unsure of what. There could be a curse to constant sobriety. Always aware, always focused. Time inches by at a cruel pace, uninterested in our ennui. The ticking of the clock labors like rusted springs. Once work concluded, we would typically find Vixine wandering the streets. She would sample the sounds of the city and peruse the various shops on her route home. But today was different, for a new shop opened in town. Hmm. What's this? Far-fetched fetishes? Hm. Cute. The ornate wooden sign hanging overhead had a black cat holding a leather leash and harness. It seemed to be more than just a curiosity shop. Hmm. The world's first adult fetish knick-knack store? <laughs> what? Oh, this I gotta see. The room seemed musty, but warm. Cozy. No other customers were in the shop, and the owners seemed to be out. The corridors were tight, packed with various knickknacks, sex toys of impeccable design, high-tech equipment, dolls, and other devices of unknown purpose coated in chrome. I never imagined there'd be a store like this in town. Leashes, latex, rubber, and full-size sex robots. It's like a sex store from the future or something. Ooh, what's this? She happened across a little item that drew her attention. It was a small, ornate sheep made entirely of rubber. A squeaky sheep. You're cute. <laughs> well, it's too hard to be a chew toy. It was about four inches across and three inches tall. Tiny black stumps for feet. And a face devoid of features. Smooth with a tiny ring for a mouth. It's like a sex toy, if you were a foot tall, I guess. Oh, there's a button on its side. Hmm. There was a 
was a kento humming emanating from the sheep. <laughs> is this a vibrator? This has got to be a joke. Mm. I can't turn it off. Uh, well, I, I guess I could... Uh... Her voice drifted off. Arms slid to her sides. The sheep's noise was all she could hear, all she could concentrate on. Her posture adjusted, hands lightly gripping the back of her thighs. Chest pushed forward, muzzle tilted up as her tail curled to an S. What's happening to... <sighs> Silence crept over her mind. When she came to, she was in the center of a flock of fully sized bipedal sheep. Oh, she's awake. She's awake. She's awake. Goodness, Goodness, she was asleep for a while. Uh, what? Where? The sheep had glossed almost rubbery feet and wrists, completely naked if it were not for their smooth pelts of white fur. The wool was not matted or unkempt like typical sheep. Instead, they were so impossibly well-groomed, their pelts resembled plush. Their chest fluff made them appear to be female, but the only thing to indicate any semblance of gender was their voices. Even that was an educated guess. Bixine was sandwiched between four sheep, one pushing her fluff against her back, another pressing their back to squish against her ample bosom, and two others on either side. Where am I? Who are you people? Curious, curious, curious. We can't seem to recall. Yes. Could you perhaps tell me who we are? Uh, I remember a toy. But that's probably silly. silly. Speak up. I can barely hear you. Oh dear, dear. But we are sheep. We so? Are sheep. What does that have to do with. Because our heads are full of wool. So much wool. Delightful wool. So warm. But also so very difficult to focus. Uh, can you move, please? I can't seem to... Oh. oh, terribly sorry. Can't move aside. Head full of wool, you see. What? How does that even... Can't expect a sheep to move on their own when their head is full of wool. No, no, no. Not at all. I believe my head is full of wool as well. Can't remember a thing. Is your head full of wool too, sheep? I'm not a sheep. I... I'm... Uh... Vixine felt a cushioned bosom squish against her arm, pushing it back to the center of the flock. Soon, the flock of sheep started to move bumping into Vixine and forcing her to clop. Uh, hmm. Oh, there's somewhere important we have to be. Yes, so very important. Mustn't dally. Mustn't dally. The room was almost church-like. The sheep never raised their voices beyond a delicate coo. Even Vixine couldn't seem to muster the energy to speak up louder than they. Uh, uh. Where are we going? Oh, goodness. I can't seem to recall. My head is full of wool after all. Yes, so very hard to remember anything. It's perfectly fine to not remember. The flock is here. They know where to go. D do they? Uh, but who's leading? Bah. Does it matter? I suppose not. Bah. That's... Nah. The sheep strode into another room, pulsing colorful lights shone above their heads. Gentle, deep tones booped and beeped at the edge of their hearing, enticing them to be quieter, so they had the chance to hear it. What's that sound? She was led along like the other sheep, finding her legs moving on their own, 
as her fur gradually started to shift into a white gradient. The intoxicating nature of the rest of the environment made it difficult to notice that she, too, was becoming a sheep. Fingers turned to smooth, black cloven hooves. Body turned to rubbery, light black skin. Soft, white fluff squishing into existence as the other sheep continued to baa gently in her doe-like ears. Stop it. I... I, I can't concentrate. <laughs> While... Oh, your head is full of wool. Should think not, dearie. The flock knows where to go. Just relax. I... What's that? I quite like how we baa. A robotic arm descended down on the rows of sheep. A smooth face mask with large earphones was attached to the end. Row by row, the sheep had smooth masks placed over them. Phallic shapes pressed into their throats to feed and breathe as the earphones stuffed their hearing. Oh, this is me. fur was now snow white fluff rubbery skin for her forearms and feet fluff hiding her ample bosom and the white fluff encroaching around her face like something was meant to indent there in that simple opening of fluff something like a smooth featureless mass I I can't seem to recall. My head is full of wool. My head is full of... Those are protocols active. Sheep. 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 sheep, the mask covering her face, similar to the toy that brought her here. No mouth, no eyes, no nose, just a smooth, blank face of rubbery plastic. Lights glowed in uniform with the flock. Not a word disrupted this calm serenity among the sheep. A mindless flock, programmed to follow. Dosa, Dosa, Rada, Soft, Sheep, Sheep, Dosa, Rada, Soft, Sheep. Dixine had found serenity, no longer forced to decide for others. She merely followed. One could argue the very concept of Dixine was no more. Just a docile sheep. After all, how could you lead when your head is full of wool? Dosa, rubber, soft, sheep. Dosa, rubber, soft, sheep. Dosa, rubber, soft, sheep. Dosa, rubber, soft. been the tip of the triangle. Vixine Dixon was played by Lena Pilchard. Mr. Telling, Caudle, The Sheep by Gina Galore, and Princess Lil. 
Music provided by Ty. Sound design by Darkwin. I have been your host, Darkwin. If you would like to hear more of The Tip of the Triangle, please consider supporting us. Thank you for visiting.